You're watching 11 Alive Morning News. 11 minutes of nonstop news starts now. And it's a major red alert across the top end perimeter. A live look shows all lanes closed. 285 westbound at Shambly Dunwoody Road. This nightmare has been going on for most of the morning. Well, we're looking at uh, the chance for more showers coming back to our area. It won't be the strong, severe thunderstorms that we saw yesterday, but will increase over the next couple of days. We'll talk more about it coming up. First this morning, we are staying on top of the Fulton County Grand Jury investigation into former President Donald Trump and his allies. Indictment watch is on this morning. We told you about news of an indictment that could come at any moment. Ariana Manisa is live for us at the Fulton County Courthouse monitoring some new developments. Hi, Ariana. Good morning. The stage is set here at the Bolton County Courthouse as the nation watches and wait to see if former President Trump could be indicted again. Now, as we await that decision from the grand jury, we are learning that another state lawmaker has been called to testify. Now, former Lieutenant Governor Jeff Duncan is the latest witness to be called to testify in front of the grand jury this month. Duncan served as a lieutenant governor and president of the state Senate as lawmakers were subjected to pressure from former President Trump's allies to overturn turn the election. The Republican has been an outspoken critic of the former president and signaled he will cooperate if he is called upon to testify. Take a listen. I'm going to certainly keep the details uh, to, to myself just to protect the integrity of the investigation, but they're a very clear subpoena that, that was delivered to us uh, late last week, and uh, we will certainly answer the questions that they've got before us and answer their call to show up for this for the uh, grand jury. Now, this all comes as District Attorney Fonnie Willis is moving closer to uh, finally handing down her decision from this grand jury. Now, she's saying that, or hinted rather, that this decision could come by August 18th and charging documents can come down by September 1st. Back to you. Ariana, thank you. Time now, 6.50 this morning. We are learning that a 19-year-old woman has died after being in the Fulton County Jail for three months. Now her family says they will hold a news conference tomorrow morning to talk more about it. This is a picture of Nani Batiste Kosoko. Her family says she turned 19 just days before she died on July 11th. They say she was held for three months without bail on a misdemeanor charge. Right now, the U.S. Department of Justice is investigating the jail conditions for uh, many, many months. They're looking at what it is like inside the facility after the family of LaShawn Thompson says he was eaten alive by bed bugs. We reached out to the Fulton County Jail. They say they are still investigating what happened and Batiste Kosoko's cause of death. Today, we do expect a jury to be seated as a man stands trial for the second time. Austin Ford is accused of killing 18-year-old Tory Lang. Ford's case first went to trial in April, but jurors couldn't reach a unanimous verdict. And the judge declared a mistrial for those charges of felony murder, aggravated assault, voluntary manslaughter, and two counts of possession of firearms. Opening arguments could start as early as this morning. We are learning about a second search at a Porterdale property in connection to the Morgan Bauer case. Case. The 19 year old was last seen alive six years ago. Over the weekend, police in other states arrested two people in connection to her death, one charged with murder, the other for concealing it. Police tell us they're working to get them back to Georgia for trial. Get out your chainsaw. We are seeing more storm damage from across Metro Atlanta after yesterday's powerful storms came through. This is some brand new video for you coming out of Decatur. Look at this huge tree that fell on Trailwood Road. A number of other neighborhoods look exactly like this. Thankfully, today we should get some good cleanup time. That was a look at your top headlines. Yeah, take a deep breath. At least you're going to see a little sunshine today, Chesley. Yeah, a little bit, just a little bit. We'll have a mix of sun and clouds for much of the day. We're starting off okay. There are a few clouds overhead. Uh, I think we'll get the sunshine early on. Those clouds will build in as we head through the day, but we're not anticipating much in the way of any rainfall. It's only a 20% chance, so just a few of us, maybe one or two of us. We'll see a stray sprinkle or two. 85 degrees by noon on our way to 90 for an afternoon high. Back down to 85 degrees by 7 o'clock tonight with those clouds hanging on. The rain itself is back off to the west of us right now. Severe thunderstorm watches in effect for this uh, cluster that's rolling through the Arkansas area headed toward Mississippi. Uh, for us, things are starting to calm down. We had some showers through the overnight, but those showers uh, over the central portion of the state have begun to fade away.
Uh, we'll see more popping up once we get into the daytime heating with that front making its way further down to the south. And it's south of that front where we'll have the better chance for severe weather today. It's a uh, slight risk for severe weather from Macon southward. That's that yellow area that you see right there. Just above it is that dark green. That's a level one risk. That's for our southernmost counties over the Atlanta metro area. Northward, you're not looking at much there. That light green shade just means a general threat for thunderstorms. Tomorrow, that dark green comes back over our area. And you can see where we have that level one threat for isolated strong to severe thunderstorms. Certainly possible for Wednesday. Day, and that hangs out for Thursday as well. So really for the rest of the week, we're going to remain unsettled today. My pick for the week, our lowest threat for the rain to be around. Here's how it plays out. Forecast track model shows some uh, thin clouds out there this morning. At least we'll see more moving in as we head into the afternoon. Notice we're staying dry. Here comes that threat for the showers, but I'll stay mainly to the south of our area for today, or at least for this afternoon. Further clearing will take place overnight tonight. We'll wake up on Wednesday morning with mostly sunny skies, but we're expecting the clouds to build back in once we get to the afternoon with a better chance for some scattered showers, thunderstorms rolling into the area. And they, I think they'll be around at least through Thursday morning and then Thursday afternoon. Another little round will start to move into the forecast area. So we'll have these rounds off and on scattered showers and thunderstorms, some of which could produce some gusty winds. So we'll have to be on the lookout for that. Extended outlook shows today the pick for the week tomorrow, 92 degrees for the high temperature, 30% chance for the rain, 40% chance for Thursday and Friday. With that temperature going up slightly, especially as we head into the weekend. Now we'll have a little lower th threat for the rain. Ice Isolated showers or, storm, or storms are uh, possible during the afternoon on Saturday, 20% chance on Sunday. But look at those temperatures up to 94 degrees on Sunday, and we'll hold on to that as we start the work week next week. Crash? All right, Chesley, it's a good thing the rest of the rush hour has been uneventful. The I 20s, your south side, downtown, 75, 400. Hasn't been bad. Yeah, you got some folks out there, but this, again, unprecedented. You just don't see this. And when you do, and it's in the middle of a morning rush, you know you're in panic mode. That is 285 westbound, right near Shambly Dunwoody Road. We have had all lanes completely shut down. A tractor trailer trying to veer away from hitting an abandoned vehicle struck the median wall. We've been in contact with Dunwoody PD all morning. They still say they don't know when they're going to reopen 285 westbound at Shanley Dunwoody Road. In fact, they are diverting traffic off at North Peach Street, North Shallowford, and that Shanley Dunwoody exit. 85 southbound feeling the pinch. The east side perimeter also feeling this now. 85 south to 400 north. That's your best bet to get around it, but just realize a lot of folks are doing that, so 85 south pretty jammed up getting into Midtown. This is just unbelievable to see this 285 westbound closed at Shambly Dunwoody. I'm Christy Diaz in Atlanta. There is controversy and some confusion over Crocs in Clayton County. Some schools are banning the popular shoe, even threatening in school suspension if students wear them. Now, some schools are saying it's an issue of safety, but parents and students are pushing back on that argument, saying nurses and food service industry workers wear them so they don't understand that. But ultimately, the school district says each school has the authority to implement additional dress expectations and general guidance on their campus campuses as they deem appropriate. The biggest problem, some parents say, is the penalty for wearing Crocs. One mom says she got an automated message from Jonesboro High School saying that a student could get in-school suspension for wearing them. I think the school has a job to do and I respect that. ISS is a little severe. A warning is in order. Direct communication with parents is in order. I mean, it's definitely confusing. Ultimately, students have to abide by the dress code at their schools, but some parents say they do plan to bring this up to members of the Clayton County School Board. Back to you. How many Beyonce song titles can you catch in this next story? Here we go. The countdown is on for Beyonce to take over the bands, and if you are one of thousands still trying to get information and score a ticket, hold up and buyer beware. Don't let scammers break your soul. Avoid buying strangers or beautiful liars. Get your tickets from a third party seller that belongs to the National Association of Ticket Brokers. Also, pay with the credit card so you have some extra protection. And if you come across scammers, ring the alarm and let the Better Business Bureau know about it, Chesley. <laughs> ring the alarm. You're looking at uh, uh, noon today. Temperatures right around 85 degrees. We'll have partly to mostly cloudy skies. And that's the way it's going to be for much of the day. There may be a stray sprinkle or two that comes out of those clouds. We'll give it a slight chance. 20%. 90 will be your afternoon high temperature. That's where we should be for this time of year. By 6 o'clock, we're down to 85 degrees. We're going to see the chance for the rain go up as we head into Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday as well with those temperatures going up as well.
It only took several hours, but you are getting the good news first right here. This is a live look. They are pacing and getting ready to reopen 285 westbound at Shamley Dunwoody Road, but don't expect it to recover anytime soon. These delays stretch well beyond Spaghetti Junction. It has been a nightmare across the top end. 285 West at Shamley Dunwoody. I got your update at 726. Finally, don't forget to get those Mega Millions tickets. Tonight's jackpot worth $1.55 billion dollars. This is the third largest jackpot in U.S. history. The drawing set for 11 p.m. tonight. I never bring money for the office pool. Gotcha. I'll spot you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We'll spot gotcha. you. you see I it, just, I'll take the point five. <laughs> <laughs> Whatever we can get. Have a great day, everybody.